Over the last few videos, we've been talking a lot about quadratics, and we've learned how to factor quadratics and how to solve quadratic equations and all those good things. But in this video, I want to talk about quadratic functions. In other words, I want to consider this as a function of x, where I plug in values for x, and I want to keep up with what all the output values are uh, as you plug in different numbers for x. So we're going to use function notation to do this. And so we'll take our quadratic and we'll set it equal to f of x. And so now every time I want to evaluate the quadratic at a certain place, then I'll plug that number in for x and for all the x's. And then that output value will be f of x. Let's, let's look at an example. Let's say we had a, a quadratic function f of x equals x squared plus 3x minus 1. Then this would be an example of a quadratic function and, and you might be asked to evaluate this quadratic function. That's a very uh, popular exercise. So for example, if you were asked to find f of 2, then what that means is for every x in your quadratic function, you're going to take those x's out and replace them with 2. So we'd have 2 squared plus 3 times 2 minus 1. And that's going to give you a numerical value. 2 squared is 4. 3 times 2 is 6. 4 plus 6 makes 10. And 10 minus 1 gives us 9. Now what is 9? Well, 9 was the output from plugging 2 in for x. And so if you remember, this is actually very similar to what we talked about when we studied linear functions. Um, this gives us basically an x, y ordered pair that's on the graph of this function. So we plugged in a 2 for x and we got out a 9 for y. So this is like an x, y ordered pair that's on the graph of this particular quadratic function. Now we'll talk about graphs of these quadratic functions in just a minute, but just for now understand that you plug in, you plug in x, that's your independent variable, uh, that's your domain, and then you get out output values, which we call the range, which are the dependent variables, because the y values depend on x. So they're the dependent variables where x is the independent variable. So anyways, uh, let, let's talk a little bit now about what these guys' graphs look like. Um, to, to talk about this, let's, let's trim it down to the most simple example we can have. Um, x squared is the simplest quadratic function there is because it is quadratic because it has an x squared, but we don't have any additional terms, just the x squared with a coefficient of 1. So let, let's see what these guys look like. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to choose a few x values and then see what f of x turns out to be. Uh, let's do negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. Those are good, simple x values to plug in. We plug in negative 2 for x, negative 2 squared is positive 4. Plug in negative 1, negative 1 squared is 1. 0 squared is 0. 1 squared is 1, and 2 squared is 4. So when you start plotting these, negative 2, comma, 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 1, comma, 1, 0, comma, 0, 1, comma, 1, and 2, comma, 4, whoa, do you see what happens here? These are very different than our linear functions. <laughs> these don't line up in a straight line anymore. And the reason that is, is because of this squared term. So these, these guys, these general quadratic functions, these are absolutely not linear. The graphs of these guys do not go in a straight line. And that matter of fact, you can connect these dots to see what they look like. It looks like these dots come down, and then it looks like they turn around, and then they go back up. And this is what the graph of a typical quadratic function would look like. And we have a name for these guys. See, these are called parabolas. This is a word you need to get very familiar with. Um, we're not going to talk a lot, especially in this video, about graphs of quadratics, but I do want to at least expose you to it just so you can see what they look like and just see that they're not linear. They're not straight lines. 
um, they bend and turn. And these guys can be used for tons of different real life applications. Um, we're not going to look extensively in this video uh, too deep into this application, but I at least want to at least want to open your eyes to it. One uh, very popular application of quadratic functions is projectile motion. When you shoot something in the air, you can measure its height, the height of the projectile based off of time, and the model, the path that a projectile follows over time is a parabola. And, and so just, just think about it. If you had something you know, like a rocket or maybe let's do like a football or a baseball or something and you throw it, then its height is going to change depending on time. You're going to throw it up in the air and then it's going to come back down and hit the ground. And the shape that this makes, this U-shaped graph, is a parabola. Now if I look back on the previous page, you see this U-shaped graph, but it was uh, oriented upwards just because it was x squared. That's, that's this particular quadratic. But in general, they just have to be this U-shaped graph. So your parabola for a different quadratic function might be here, or maybe it'll be turned uh, possibly upside down. That happens a lot. But anything that looks like that U-shaped graph move left, right, up or down, or reflected upside down will be considered a parabola. So you know that opens up a whole world of possibilities. Um, anything dealing with projectile motion will be actually related to a quadratic function. Like I said, we don't want this video to get too long. We, we're not going to go into a lot of these details right now. But uh, in this video, I just wanted to basically introduce what a quadratic function was, uh, a little bit of the basics about it, how to evaluate quadratic functions and that, that sort of thing. So if you have f of x equals anything x squared plus anything times x plus a constant, anything of that form, you're going to be dealing with a quadratic function.